Cool. We good to go? Good. All right, so I was in the process of, of taking the, the highlighters. Kind of helps group the components since they're kind of sp spread out over the rack. Uh, as far as association, so, you know, the, the yellow highlights representing the conference. In normal mode, these are programmed going into the conference room mixer, okay? And then the uh, lobby will be a different color, so it's just a little easier to uh, identify, you know, what components go to what uh, destination. Um, so what we're going to do is the, the top of the receivers, you guys have already familiar with changing frequencies and groups and channels and so forth and so on. Um, would you like for me to go over that? Rob's not have figured that well out. Okay, so, so what we're going to do is, is on the displays of the receivers, we have a GP, which is a group, and then the CH, which is the channel of that group. Okay, And then it displays the actual frequency below. And this goes for all the same receivers. There are four buttons on the front of the component, a power, a set, and an up and down navigation. In order to change the frequency, you will hit set, and the group will flash. Turn it up, that'll change the group, down, change the group. Once you're finished with the group that you want, you hit set again. Now the channel flashes. Once you set that, you hit set again, and now it's locked in. This must match the transmitter display. Has a display and the same thing. It must match the same thing as your receiver, or you will not get any sound. So what is a group? All of the is a group a speaker? No. What's in a group? A group is a group of frequencies okay. that are within. Okay. Okay. Good, then. So. Now, there is another feature on this that you can do um, that, that's, that's called clear scan. Okay, so while you're using the microphone, if you get into the position where, you know, you keep getting and it keeps cutting out or you hear it or something like that, then you can try a different frequency. A clear scan, what it will do is, is it will um, it will allow you, and you push and hold the set button. The clear scan will go through and go, mm, that's pretty good, that's pretty good, that's not pretty good. Uh, when you do this clear scan, they recommend turn all these off. It's weird, because you would think you'd want them on so they would reserve, but it doesn't work that way. So they've got their own reason. So they've actually came back and said that group seven, uh, channel eight, is clear. So then you just match your transmitter, and voila, you try that. So that is a way to quickly get out of a, a, a position that if you have any interference, do a quick scan. If that doesn't work and you're still getting stepped on, then there may be other issues beyond your control, okay? With wireless, it's, it can be that way. You guys out here shouldn't be too bad, I wouldn't think. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to match it back though, just so we can match our, our transmitter back to the 12.4. So we're going to hit set, we're going to go up to 12, and then we're going to hit set again, and we're going to go down to 4. 14. It's 12.14, it is. Oh, well, I got that. So, so, now, so now it shows um, uh, the battery indicator on the front. It tells you the battery uh, life. And it will say in increments. Uh, it'll give you increments. Once the, the battery uh, gets down to a couple of increments, you better change it before you start to use it because it's going to die on you soon. So, uh, there is a AF, which is audio frequency. That is, the, that is the actual level. As you can see as I speak, the AF uh, flashes. It just indicates audio going through the transmitter and that the receiver is receiving. There's an RF meter. Radio frequency meter just indicates the amount of strength of the, of the uh, signal. So if they take this over there, where I was, and this RF meter starts to drop, you may want to leave the door open. That would help a lot because that's a metal door and this is brick. And with these antennas being located in here, it would help tremendously to allow that RF to, to, to get in here. Okay? Oh, Lord, Ken's not going to like that. I'm just saying, if you if you run into 
if you do run into a situation where these give you a problem out there in the lobby, that's that's that will help. That's a quick fix. That's a quick fix. Okay. So um, all right. So these and and then just power to to turn them off. Um, I'll give you some advice. When you're not using these, when you're not using the wireless and you just got music playing in the background, make sure these are off. Turn these off or turn them down on the mixer. Okay, because if there's nothing transmitting to them, they're still receivers. So they're just gonna sit there. And if they get anything that is close to this frequency, they're gonna spit it out as audio. Then you get this interference, it scares people, and then they drop their coffee or their Peter pants. <laughs> Okay, so you'll have that. Yeah, we do have that. Yeah, so you don't want that. So avoid that, and the easiest way to do it, that way you don't mess with your levels or anything, is just come over here, push and hold power, and it'll turn off. Once you do that, you're home free. You won't have to worry about that uh, happening. And we have three of these for what reason? You have three, uh, a dedication, simplicity, because you have a dedicated one here, WLS, C, is down here for the lobby, and then you have these two guys, which are for the conference room. Well, I mean, I'm educating. <laughs> Please follow along. So anyway, so WLS A and WLS B, just wireless A, wireless B. That's all, that's all in the case. Okay. So those are the wireless. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the transmitter for just a second. All right. The cap is on the bottom. Pull it off. Pull the battery out. Okay. The battery doesn't have any polarity. You just shove it in. Once you put it in, you can turn it back on and you can make sure that it does work. There you go. It does come on. It does match. And, and the RF signal's there. So you're golden. If you need to change this for any reason, there's a set and up and down arrows that are at the bottom that does the same functionality as the ones on the receiver. Mm -hmm. You hit set once, it flashes the group. You hit set again, it flashes the channel. Hit it again, it locks. Where are the rest of the lights at? Hmm? Yeah, there's three in here. Yep. Okay. And then once you're done, then put that on there. Now, there is a feature that if you're given this to someone else besides staff, which I'm sure that happens quite a bit, there is a lock feature that you can do on these, okay? It keeps them from messing with it, you know, especially kids. Kids like to, you know, finger. If you push and hold the up and down buttons at the same time, do you see that? Mm -hmm. So it pops up as security. So if, if somebody tries to do anything with it, it's locked out. They can't change the frequency. So that's a huge, huge thing to have. So that way nobody messes with it. If you want to get back into it, push and hold the up and down buttons again. Now it says access. Easy peasy. When you're using these microphones, these microphones are vocal handheld mics. They're not made to do this because they won't pick up very well. They're not made to be like a hip hop artist. Okay, it can't be box. Okay, so you gotta you gotta keep it. I don't know. We were keep it on the low the other day. So anyway, these work best about two inches away from your hand, from your mouth, just like this. Okay, keeping two inches away, um, they sound full, and you don't over drive them. And, and everybody, uh, it's a little better quality sound coming through. Okay, so those are microphones. Um, these are network switches, which don't really have anything a whole lot to do with the uh, audio. The camera system comes through there. So, so this is the pass through the camera. If I ever ask you, say, come up and, and and check the switch, that would be what we would ask. Okay. Why do you see all those blinking lights? That's not yeah. <laughs> good. Okay. So good with the microphones. So you have, let's start in the conference room. This is the conference audio mixer, okay? That's all it does. It just it mixes the audio for the conference room. 
So what it does is channel one, wireless A comes into channel one, this is its level. Channel two is wireless B. Channel three is the CD player. That is the CD audio, okay? Which comes down, uh, CD, right there. So this goes to here. That's its level. Whatever you put in here and play, to come up here, that's its level where you turn it up and down. Video. This video is the video that comes off of the source that is plugged in into in the room in the, in the jack on the wall. So whatever you plug in to that jack, what it's doing is whether it is the VGA or the HDMI, it goes up to the projector and then from the projector it comes in here. Our VGA doesn't work. Oh, bummer. Hmm. I have to look into that. Okay. <laughs> Just to throw that out there for you. Oh, I saw it was HDMI coming in there. It worked for a minute. Somebody used it once, and then... Broke it? No, I mean... Uh, I'll check it out. Okay. I'll check it out. Um, these other channels are not being used. Tone control, equalization, low, mid, and high. Please leave those at 12 o'clock. Don't mess with those. It's really bad to have that on there anyway, but, well, it is. So, um, And then this is just your signal indication as far as your level. Master is exactly what it is. It's the master level of all your inputs. So if you have, say you have a handheld and you have music in the background, okay? But all of it is just too loud. That's what the master is for. The master will bring both the microphone and the background music all at the same time down because it's the master of master level of these. If the background music is too loud, but your microphone sounds good, just come in here and turn the, the background down a little bit. Okay? So that's what they have individual volumes for. Any questions about the mixer? No. Nope. Cool. All right. So we move on. Uh, on down, conference room DVD. The sources are set up on the projector. So you have to use the remote for the projector in order to select between the different sources. HDMI 1 is the DVD player. HDMI 2 is the HDMI jack that is on the wall. And then the VGA, you would select VGA as the input. Uh, the the Blu-ray player is pretty self-explanatory. I will tell you this, on this Blu-ray player, it actually works pretty nice. You can actually take... You can take a thumb drive with a, with a video file and you can plug it in here. And it will actually go through and it will read uh, as far as videos that are on that drive. And will allow you to play whatever video files are available. Now, it's a lot easier to navigate through this thing by looking at your screen, you know, which would be nice to have a little monitor in here. So if you put a monitor up here or something, then whatever your Blu-ray is putting out, you can navigate it in here with the remote control and then go out there and enjoy it. But that's just a little extra. Because uh, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I've got to burn a disc. Well, you burn a disc, then you got to render it. And it takes forever. But if you just take a file like you get off YouTube or, or you create one with a, a camera or whatever, this is the quick and easy way. It's to just bring a thumb drive in with it on it, shove it in. Uh, MP4, AVI, and MPEG are supported files. It supports other files, you would just have to look at your area manual or online. How do they cycle through this? Uh, with the remote. The remote control Which on the Blu-ray player. Is that in the drawer? Yeah. Should be. Yeah, it's right yeah. here. Hello. So, that's why I say it. A little video monitor would really help you a lot. That way you're not trying to go out there and do this number. Try to try to get, because this the, the sensor is like right in front of it, so so the monitor in here would be a plus What's if you go to use output? it. What do we need? What? Is it a VGA output? Is it a HDMI output? What do we need for a monitor? Of well, in order to do a monitor on this, there's only one HDMI output on the blue on this um, this Blu-ray player. So in order for the for the Blu-ray player to have the ability to watch more in one video, you would have to do a distribution amplifier. 
So you'd have to take the one HDMI, hit a DA, which is a distribution amplifier, and it, it splits it into two signals. Yeah, that's what that is. So it'd be something that, if, you know, we, we can get you and put it in, but anyway. Uh, so that's the, uh, that's the Blu-ray player. It's kind of set up the same way as any other Blu-ray player, except this is a pro unit, so it has an actual display on the front of it. These ones at Walmart and everything else, they have no display. So you have no idea what's going on. With it. So I use that like every day. You sure can? No, I do. Oh. And it's, yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And that, that works that for gets, That gets used every day. Okay. And then the speakers out front is okay. a challenge for me. Cool. So, um, all right. So we have the lobby CD player. Now, the lobby CD player is where I was telling you about where it would be a good place to have the thumb drive. Throw your MP files on it. Um, you can even do WAV if you want, which I don't know if you know it does or not. Those are, those are high quality video files. So anyway, it's got a USB port right here. Once you uh, plug the USB into this guy, then it's pretty self-explanatory as far as the, the tracks that are, that are available on the drive. It will automatically uh, sometimes it will sense. Nope, this one doesn't. So you have to change it. The source, which is right here. So you got CD, you got AUX, and USB input mode. So now it's going to go through the, the drive and it's going to go, hmm, that's an audio file, that's an audio file. And it starts playing. So it just takes off. So you can, you know, the transport, you can stop it. You can go through the different files and everything. You can scroll through the different files right here. So see, I've got a total of 86 audio files on there. If you know your, the track of the audio file, then you can just go directly to it. But this would be the most simple way. You just, and when you go to make the audio files on the thumb drive, don't put them in a folder. Just, just make the drive open and then just drop the audio files uh, on, the, on the thumb drive. That way you're not having to get, navigate through the folder uh, on this thing. It just makes it a bit easier. Uh, 